And so we're now going to turn, and as you can see the sequence here, to the actual survey that's been done. And Ferran is going to present some of the results that we've had from the first pilot study of the Expert Perception Index. Ferran Martin Azicoma. Thank you all for coming. Um, well, so as uh, Pippa and, and Andy have pointed out, we're going to present the first results of the, our pilot study. Uh, we will be presenting mainly the research design, and then Rich will go through uh, the initial results and, and the conclusion steps. Well, and the next steps that we have that we have to to produce as 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 Andy pointed out, and you see in his last slide there were like 49 items, all right, they were already presented. So this is what we've been going through in our survey. Uh, we've been, as it was included, as you could see, there we're including almost everything from the whole cycle, from the very first beginning from registration of the political parties and to the aftermath. We're also asking regarding violence, we're asking about media, we're asking about finance, we're asking about whether women could run or they would, couldn't run. Uh, we are asking them in a five point scale, uh, we're also including the no, not answer, all right? Everything, a lot of documentation, by the way, is public, and it's in all the thick book that Pippa gave you, right? So you can, you can, you can go through that. Um, what I wanted to say is that also it is a very first part, all right? So it's just we've done uh, a pilot for 10 candidates that right now we, we're going through, and it's the first part of, of some other studies that, that will come up. Right, it's an expert survey. We're also including uh, anchoring vignettes that, again, are also there, and we're also including some background, some additional background items such as which ideology are you uh, from the from the expert perspective, uh, his his or her uh, knowledge of the election, or how he or she considers as as a, as much of an expert. And there's something that I would like you to to. You know, some people are very critical about or regarding expert surveys because, you know, it's kind of weird, maybe are biased or who is an expert, who is not an expert. I will provide you with a definition in a, in a second. But what we want to make sure is that it's a, it's a widely, uh, they have been used very much in the literature right now. Our approach, I think, it's a bit more flexible in understanding what is, it, what is an expert and quite likely we're going to loosen it up a bit more when we are, and I will come back this to, to in a second. <coughs> Why are we asking the experts? Well, mainly because they are, they know some other issues, they're more, more in detail. I mean, their knowledge, the, the level of, of knowledge is a bit higher than what our relatives could have, right? So if I have to ask something about registration of the parties, it's gonna be a hard, dry issue for like regular citizens. However, or the good thing is that some of the questions that we have, we can check them or we can contrast the results of our expert survey with the public and some of the results that Rich will go through right now. You'll see that they work pretty well. So, and we're also asking to the experts how good or how fair they think that the questionnaire was. And so far we got a, a pretty decent result. Besides, we believe that besides the information and that they are able to, to that the experts are able to, to get technical issues, uh, we can compare domestic and international, and through time, if we get funding uh, for later or subsequent years, we will be able to see the evolution in some different countries about how the uh, electoral process has evolved, which also, I believe, this, this is quite important. Now, an expert, we define it as a political scientist or other scientist who has written about or who has other demonstrated knowledge of the electoral process in a particular country. Uh, and we, do, we define demonstrated knowledge as a membership of a relevant research group, uh, university employment, or existing publications. Now, this, is, this, has, this, has, and this has different implications for what we want to say. Now, we are going to, uh, to, to expand our definition of an expert, so way lately we're going to aim also uh, NGOs, right, and also journalists, so we're going to have a, a bigger pool of what we have right now. The, and we are not only reaching those people who have published, which is important, right? Because it could be possible that there would be a, a publication bias only by gathering those people who have already published. And we're trying to reach people from all around the, from around the world. Let me, something, let me show you something. 
Those are the 20 countries that we have already contact, or that we is, is for our sample study. It's a pilot study. We gather the elections from July 2012 to December. All right, we excluded, I believe it's Timor-Leste, uh, Libya, and, and Senegal. All right, so this may have affected our response rate and that, that we'll come to see in, in a moment. Now, the web, the, the, the survey has been gone through the internet, all right? Now, some people will have problems, problems that we are very happy to, to address here. Uh, they also in the paper, we, it is true that the response rate through the internet is it's a bit uh, lower than, than, than with telephone or face-to-face. -face. However, we have reached a 30% response rate, which is, we believe pretty decent here. You have more or less how those responses are distributed. Now, what do we believe in green is the average, all right? So it's 30%. Now, it's, there is a big difference between Sierra Leone, as you can see, and the Netherlands. Strange, not at all. But some things that you may consider to, so that we take that as, a, as a good sign, the first thing is that first consider the time. We're asking these questions in 2013, starting in March, and, and we're only doing it for five months, all right? So it's more than one, almost a year lapse in mind. So the experts probably do not recall it, first thing. Second, it's through the internet. And, and finally, some emails could not be open. So we have had some problems at some point that some people may have received the email, but they simply don't, don't answer, all right? And just last thing, and I'm, and I'm done. Uh, internet, quest, internet service have a 10 response, a 10 points average response below when it's normally face-to-face -face or telephone. So it's 30%, it's, it's pretty decent. Thanks. Thank now, Rich. Great. Rich Frank, telling us about the results of the initial results of the pilot study. In two minutes or less. That's right. OK, so very briefly, um, we have 49 different variables. Um, and we're just trying to think of a couple brief ways of kind of giving you an indication about the richness of the data, overall uh, initial trends that we've seen in the pilot uh, study so far. So we created a simple additive index uh, scale to 100 points to kind of compare across questions as well as across countries to see whether the pilot study matches with what we already know with different um, other data sources about the, the relative integrity of the, uh, of the process within countries. And so these are uh, a couple of the different questions um, that we've that we've looked at so far and looked at the, the average uh, response across different questions. And we see the, the aspects of elections that show the highest level of integrity, uh, whether the count was um, uh, uh, gone forward fairly, the procedures were followed, and the parties had um, uh, regulations that were generally followed. Higher levels of uh, um, less issues with those, uh, those measures, as opposed to ones campaign finance, uh, media, some of the other ones that Dr. Norris was referring to earlier that are kind of less looked at that were uh, before election day, things that we often um, aren't really capturing by monitor reports, things that happen before they actually hit the ground. Um, quickly, the average scores of this additive 100 point index of our measures across different countries, you see that the Netherlands and the Czech Republic uh, come across it, uh, Lithuania as more democratic, um, uh, Kuwait, Angola, uh, Ukraine as lower, kind of meets maybe a little bit of the, the face uh, validity tests that kind of give us hope. Um, and also looking at electoral um, external validity, if we want to look at other existing measures that are out there very briefly, we look at our 20 different cases uh, plotted against a couple of different uh, existing measures, one from the Freedom House. We aggregate and uh, turn um, their two measures into a 100-point scale. Um, we see uh, if they perfectly matched, it would be along a 45-degree line. However, as I said earlier, if the issues that we're picking up, the, that there's more problems before election day, then you should see a little bit uh, of an angle below 45 degrees, and that does seem to be the case, um, that we see the Netherlands and the Czech Republic clustered uh, at the top and the other ones clustered down the bottom. Um, but uh, there is um, a decent amount of clustering. Freedom House uh, with Judith Kelly's uh, measures of the quality of electoral democracy. Uh, we also see um, uh, that we are capturing similar kind of aspects to existing measures. Um, 
also, I think maybe the most direct test that we have, and one that's most interesting to us, is uh, as another part of the project, we're funding uh, world value survey questions um, to public perceptions. I think we have uh, um, preliminary results in for some of the countries. For the elections uh, that happened in the second half of 2012 that we have in our sample, we plotted four questions that were in theirs that are worded identically in our survey. Ideally, if we want to look at whether mass perceptions are also being matched by experts, uh, that does, uh, our preliminary results are, are quite compelling. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk about them in the Q&A. Um, but in the five, uh, the five um, countries that we have so far, we see pretty close uh, grouping with uh, mass perceptions and elite perceptions, that they seem to be coming to the similar kind of conclusions. Um, Bringing me to the conclusions in the last 30 seconds or so, we're at a really early stage. We have 20 different countries in the, uh, in the uh, initial pilot survey. We're going to be going back and starting with 2013 elections when we get back to Sydney after that long flight. Uh, I think there's, I, I, it's, I'm a kid in a candy store. We're having these preliminary results. We have this uh, questionnaire and survey. Uh, there's a lot that we can do with it. And I'm really interested in your thoughts and feedback as, as to um, uh, tweaking questions in the questionnaire, different ways of analyzing the data. The, the paper is in that behemoth of uh, the handout. It's also on the PDF. Um, there's a number of different ways of analyzing it. Factor analysis, we have 49 questions. Can we try to reduce those if some questions are picking up the same uh, loading on the same dimensions? Uh, comparability of expert perceptions to different experts in different countries, conceive of uh, um, electoral integrity in similar manners, are they comparable? Uh, using the anchoring vignettes that we have, um, we, can kinda, we can use Gary King's software to try to uh, make sure that these uh, expert perceptions are comparable across countries, uh, and then you know, multivariate analysis and kind of looking at what actually drives these things. So we have the questionnaire, the preliminary results are encouraging, and we're going forth soon. I look forward to your questions and, and feedback.